welcome to Jump School. I'm your host, Hassan Ali, aka The Style Jumper. On this podcast, we'll be discussing how to jumpstart your mindset by dressing well, boost your style, confidence, and etiquette. I'll also be discussing things like mental and physical health, the power of creativity to rejuvenate your soul. The following is an excerpt from Instagram Live. Let's go. So how's LA? LA is good, man. Um, you know, I moved here about 10, almost 11 months ago, coming on a year, it's coming up to a year. Um, the beginning wasn't easy at all, bro. Like, <laughs> so I mean, it's definitely not what people, people think they just come to LA and everything just blows up. Like as soon as yep. you step off the plane, that's all you had to do is get here. It's like, yep. nah, when that's when the hard work starts. So uh, yeah, I, I love it though. I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, it's interesting, man. I, um, I spent about five years in LA uh, back in 2000, from 2000, 2005. Okay. Uh, I was there. Um, so I, I know the hustle coming from uh, design, you know, going to school for fashion um, and that hustle, right? You know, and just trying to understand how do you navigate uh, being a country boy myself and you from Arkansas, I'm from South Carolina. So just really, you know, wrapping your mind about completely culture shock and yeah. how do you navigate yourself through that? And for me, it's crazy. It wasn't even culture shock. It's kind of like, when I came to LA, because everybody comes to LA and try to have this image that they're too much and they're not social, I stood out. And a lot of people gravitate to me because I'm like extroverted, I'm goofy, I'm yep. down to earth. I'm like, oh, what's good? How you doing? Like, what's your name? What you, what you doing? Like, you got a business, blah, blah. So people are not used to that out here. So when they see that, they're like, oh, shit, who is this? Like, you're not from here, are you? I'm like, nah, <laughs> I'm not from here. So I, I mean, I like it. It's, it wasn't really a culture shock. I feel like, I feel like once you connect with your soul, and you go wherever your soul like leads you. Yeah, it, it's not it's not like shocking to you in a way. It's like okay, I'm supposed to be here. I'm meant to be here. So that's how I always coach people. Like, if you follow your soul, I'll, I've been saying this a lot now. Your 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 body is your vehicle. Your soul is um is the GPS. And the knowledge that I give you, I provide to you that you gain in your journey is the fuel you need to get keep you going on that journey. So, I love that. I love that, man. Body is a vehicle. Your soul is a GPS. And the knowledge. And just wisdom you gain on that journey is your fuel. That's premium fuel. That's premium. That's premium fuel. Your no, luxury. You know, I was thinking. I was like, you know, I hope my boy having a shirt. You be shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I just ain't been wearing shirts because quarantine, and I just been at the crib. Like, I don't even got that many clothes. But people think I got a lot of clothes. I need yeah. more. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm a dapper person. I wear suits, and like, I I don't go nowhere without being fresh. But when I'm at the crib. I feel like people fail to realize that, you know, just because you wear a suit, you know, you you are you you are like a normal human. You're not sleeping mm -hmm. in suits, you're not showering in suits. So it's like when you when you show that other side, people tend to be like, oh, he's a human. He's not like yeah. a dapper robot, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. Well, it's interesting, man. I wanted to first of all thank you for for hopping on and being so uh, kind with your time. Because sure. um, I've been following you for a couple of years, and I think. Um, <laughs> Yeah, man, it's been a couple of years. And I think I was, the, the cool thing is that the first time I think I saw you was when you were, uh, you know, you're posting the memes, you know, mm -hmm. you're breaking down your family and what was happening to you, what happened, you know, and what I like to do is start the conversation is, you know, tell us about your origin story, because I know it's really important, because you have done a great job of uh, breaking down and telling everyone how it is important to tell your story. Oh, yeah. So So, so let us know, you know, how you know what what your life was about you know growing up in arkansas yeah. and then how your story evolved to to stepping out to la shit i mean arkansas bro like uh make it real quick a poor underrepresented area hell in arkansas southeast arkansas okay. uh, up didn't have a normal childhood i had to, I had to help my mom take care of my grandma uh while she, and my, before that my grandma was helping take care of me because my mom was working two or three jobs mm -hmm. to it ends me um so my grandma became bedridden so my, my childhood was usually like school, work, and home to take care of my grandma. So I really didn't have that like normal childhood where people just yeah. whatever. So I think that, that made me mature real early. And in the moment when you're experiencing like, you know, not being able to get what you want or do what you want, you're like, damn, why me? Yeah. Uh, that, that really molded me into the person I am today because now I know how to stretch a dollar and I know how to do more with less and, you know, stuff like that. So um, I really, I really enjoy my journey. Uh, and then, like my grandma passed in 2010, and that was right when I can't when I got to um, when I was in high school. 
she passed away. Uh, and then my dad passed in 2013, mm -hmm. right when I got to college. Uh, and then, as you know, my, my mom passed in 2016 at the end of college. So, you know, <clears throat> with that being said, I put a purpose on everybody's, like, you know, life. Because mm -hmm. life is just valuable and we have to, we can't take it for granted uh, because life is very short. Uh, but once you place a meaning or a purpose on everything, uh, like the threes, the increments of threes, I placed a purpose on that. And then the timing that everybody passed, I placed a purpose on what their purpose was in my life. I like mm -hmm. my mom from childhood to high school, she helped with that. From like through high school, my dad helped with that. And then with college, my, it was up to my mom to kind of like see that through. And after that was over, <clears throat> it was like, okay, your job is done here. Now you can like, you're, you're done. I know you're tired, you sacrifice a lot. And you know, in order for life to be given, life has to be taken. Yeah. So and I was, when I was, my mom conceived, when I was conceived and when I was born, she knew that, you know, she was giving birth to a, to a king or to a visionary, to a person that was going to change the world. So uh, going through the losses and growing up rats and roaches, holes in the walls, you know, uh, really growing up in an environment where everybody was thugs and, you know, just really, that was the cool thing. You know, I, I was, I managed to, you know, not be cool for a day, but be cool forever. And now yeah. I look back and I see the people that were like, you know, we were all in that box. And I thought outside of that box because uh, I don't want to get confined in that. Uh, now mm -hmm. they, I used to look up to them because they're like, damn, they cool and shit. Like, I ain't really that cool. But, you know, now <laughs> people look up to me. And then also people are dying, bro. People are dying at two or three a day, like every week. So it's, it's, it's crazy um, to go through so much stuff. And then financially, after my mom passed, you know, uh, having to just go out in the life of my own at the age of 21. And, and I'm 24 now. I'll be 25 in July. But, um. Yeah, man, it's just it's just been crazy. And the move to L.A. came about from a mentor just telling me I should move out here uh, because of everything I built in, in Arkansas, because yeah. people in Arkansas is based on what I was building. Uh, so it's just been it's just been dope, man. And that's just like quick, I guess, run through not to bore people. Um, yeah, no, nah, you know, your story is important, man. And, and um, not everybody know your story. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah, although we say it over and over and what our experience was, you know, we're always touching and reaching people you know, network the network, if you will. But, you know, one of the things I was curious about, you know, I love your humor and candor. So where did you, where did you get that from? Like, <laughs> you're so wise to be 24, man. You know, yeah. I remember being, you know, 24 in LA. And that was the age range that I was there. You know, where do you get that candor uh, and, and such deep wisdom? Uh, I, I think people live through you, bro. Like, uh, and then I also feel like your soul has also been here before because your soul knows exactly where it wants to go. It has its purpose. Uh, so I feel like one people, one ancestor lived through you, uh, two, the wisdom that you gain in your journey. And I know my learning language. So I learn better from hands-on experience, watching documentaries and actually just being around people that are millionaires versus reading a book from a millionaire. So I learned my learning language very early and I didn't let society determine, oh, well, you're not going to be successful because you don't like to read books. You know, yeah. I, so, uh, so I feel like I'm self is source. So I'm very connected with self uh, and whatever higher power there is, whatever you like to call it, God, universe or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's a higher power, of course. And I just feel like really it's the soul and the ancestors just speaking to me because people will say, oh, well, you know, blah, 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 I used to say this or, or, or what you probably used to say this. I'm like, damn, I ain't even know. And it's just like that, that generation, you know, their, their words, and their movement lives on through people that are alive today because it, if it can't die, you know, so realizing that you are um, a person or a vessel for the community and really tapping into that and being true to that, that's some real shit. Because if you, a lot of people run away from their sole purpose and that's mm -hmm. why they don't have to that, that amount of greatness that they have within. Uh, but since I wasn't running, I didn't run from it and I took it head on because of everything I've been through. Um, I feel like the wisdom was just, it's just given. It's just a gift, yeah. you know, of course, it's, it's kind of both. Like, you learn on your journey, trial and error, and then it's also, like, damn, it's just instilled in you. Like, you're, you're gifted. Like, it's just meant to be kind of deal. Yeah. Well, you actually, um, there's a couple of parallels there that I learned, you know, from, from looking, you know, doing research. You know, grandma's boy, you know what I mean? That, that's me all day. You know, um, grew up in the church. You know, who was your biggest inspiration, man? And before you answer that i also want you to to think about you know finding soul purpose because most of us a lot of people don't know what that is or at least they've had hints and touches of it but it wasn't cultivated or wasn't affirmed in them and so they just kind of like let it go and then they you know get into the rat race 
of working in corporate America, getting a regular job, that whole, whole nine. I know exactly how to find your soul purpose, brother. What's up? Break I, it down for me, brother. I coach people on branding every day. And I tell people all the time, tap back into that childlike mentality. If you don't tap back into that childlike mentality, you will not find your purpose. You will not find the, the like courage to not have fear. Because when we were a kid, if we if we knew what fear was as kids, we wouldn't be walking today. Mm -hmm. fear, fear, fear and failure. If we knew what fear and failure was, we wouldn't be walking today. And that's because right. when we get up and we try to walk, because we see everybody walking, what do we do? We fall down. And yep. then we continue to get back up and get back up and get back up. And I also say tap back into childlike mentality uh, to find your purpose because a lot of people knew exactly what they love to do. But they're either their parents straight them away from that because their parents want to live through them because they couldn't do what they wanted to do. And then yep. also society will tell you, oh, this is the right way. This is what you need to do. You need to go to school. You need to work a job. You need to meet this requirement. And then also bills start coming into play. Once you get a little older, then you got, you got, you might have a kid pop out. Yep. So it's a lot of different things that'll pull you away from your true purpose. And, and then also, if you think it, you have to speak it and you have to write it because when you see that, that's a glimpse into your future. You don't see that for no fucking reason. Because everybody not seen it. Everybody yeah. couldn't see it. Everybody couldn't see Instagram. But the person that saw it, they thought it, they dreamed it, they spoke it, and they wrote it, and they put action behind that. So that's something that you have to do all the time as well. Whenever, because usually what you like to do as a kid is it has something to do with your purpose. The way you act has something to do with your purpose. Like, if you, I'm real goofy. So that has something to do with my purpose. I'm outgoing, I'm extroverted. So I like to speak, I like to talk to people, I like to coach, I like to, you know, just help people, see people smile, see people laugh. So that plays a big part in the impact that I'm having on the community. So I know, like, when I was a kid, I was goofy. I was chill, and I'm still tapped in with that. So I feel like the yeah, early... I saw, I saw that white silk shirt, man. <clears throat> that white silk oh, shirt with the hey, white tie. Hey, my mom... My boy. Kid clean. Mama kept the kid clean, so <laughs> that came from church, too. So every everything goes back to the roots and once you yeah. tap back to the roots um it is it's crazy how how much you'll find out even even looking back in your history like like yeah. you, you I, I might have an ancestor that was a, a cobbler and i don't mm -hmm. even know it but that might be the reason why i'm in shoes so it's it, it can get really really deep but first start with self and once you connect with self you know your story you know you know what you love you know what you care about you know the things you're interested in you know your niche like look around Ask your friends. Notice they they might come to you and say, "Dang, bro, like, does this outfit look good? Or should I wear this? Or should, should I wear that?" You should ask them, "What do I do good?" They like, "Bro, you dress your ass off," and you should be like, yeah. "Damn, style people, or I should step into fashion." Because yeah. if people around you ask you about it, shit, it's most of the times thousands of other people that would ask you about it and take your advice on it too. So I think that's that's another thing that's very important. I agree, hundred percent, man. You know, I, I think about you know when you find your soul purpose and you. Sometimes we have a, a early uh, failure, and I'll mm -hmm. speak on me. My early failure in LA, when my brand fell through through a, a really bad production deal, and I think you went through a production process that was that really frustrated you, man. And that took me <laughs> out. After that situation, I bounced out of LA mm. because I just couldn't recover. You know, I felt like I couldn't recover. Rather, and invested some money, had my little my little daughter at the time. And I was like, man, you know, after doing it for five years of, of grinding and trying to navigate through L.A., remember, this is before the Internet. <laughs> mm. You know, this is like two, 2000, 2000 to 2005. I so, was, you know what I mean? Like, what? I said, yeah, I wouldn't even think about being, like doing nothing. <laughs> I was five. <laughs> yeah, man, we, 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 we're like 20 years apart, man. So it's just it's, it's wonderful to see you. Because when I when I hear you talk, I see that fire, and I remember that energy that I had as a young man, you know, leaving down south and like saying, "Okay, I'm gonna figure this out. I'm gonna shake up shake up the world. I'm gonna do all those things that I want to do and believe that I can do." But when that scenario happened, you know, it really really rocked me to the core. I mean, and I remember you know hearing about things where you mentioned that. You know, you went, there were some dark times for you and some dark spaces, you know, definitely financially. You know, you know talk about how, did, how were you able to overcome that um, and bounce back because that's, that's really critical. Because yeah. most people can't recover. Yeah, I've been through a lot of stuff that people can't recover. I've been through months with 
the negatives that people can't like just live through. So, I mean, it, it all goes down to, is that your, is that your passion? Passion mm -hmm. is everything. I always say passion, purpose, and product. Those are three P's that I coach people all the time. I got three, three F's that I live by and three P's that I live by, live by. Passion is so big, man, because if you're passionate about something, there's usually not a plan B to that. And if there's a plan B, it goes back to plan A. So everything mm -hmm. reconnects to plan A because that's your passion. That's what you love doing. And, you know, you could go, you could work forever and not get paid doing it. Another thing, um, remembering your journey, you know, nobody ever looks back, but you have to appreciate those dark times that you've had before that dark time you're in. Because when you look back and see all the dark moments you've gotten through, it's like, damn, but this one ain't nothing. And then mm -hmm. I put my death at the top of the list of the worst things that can happen to me. So once you mentally do that, nothing else can really like just, just, outweigh that you know it's like damn that's a mom like that nothing can be worse than this and then on top of well understanding that you have everything you need in that moment when you're struggling because if you haven't had everything in your previous moments before that moment you wouldn't even have that moment so you have that moment for a reason you know and then you wake up the next day and you're still breathing that, that means you still had everything yesterday when you thought you didn't have enough so yeah. <clears throat> just a perspective Mindset, drive, my circle. I feel like your circle is very important. Whoever you surround yourself by, that they, they have to be on the same mindset, same wavelength, same energy, same drive to keep you going. Because whenever you're down, they're going to pick you up. And whenever they're down, you should be there to pick them up. So the circle is very, very important, bro. Like, family is everything. Your network is your net worth. And it's not about what you know. It's about who you know and who knows you um, and actually who got you, too. You know, so very that's a that's a fact, man. You know, I was thinking about, you know, one of my mentors out in L.A. And we'll talk about mentors. You, you, you mentioned before that, you know, you have a mentor and kind of guided you to come to L.A. And for me, my mentors actually um, and I think, you know, this person, his name is T.J. Walker. So T.J. from Cross. Yeah, yeah he, uh, he coming on the post. Yeah. Yeah, cool man. That's, yeah, man. That's and he's from Mississippi. So, you know, I don't know how we, these, these country boys you know, connect, right? But yeah, he was the person who was one of the first people to get me into modeling in, in LA and also helped me learn um, Illustrator. He gave me some some Illustrator designs and that's how I actually learned how to design clothes from TJ. And we, we lived uh, one building apart from each other. Mm -hmm. And so we developed this phenomenal relationship. So talk about your, your mentor and how, how that guide you or, or just those conversations that were poured into you um, yeah. help direct you to get into LA? I got, I got a few mentors. I got a mentor. Um, how you big brother? Know? I got a mentor uh, named Ben Clark, who's back home. Um, my homie Levi is, is a mentor. And I think mentorship is different for everybody, but I feel like it yeah. should be something that's family, you know, it shouldn't be like, Oh, we're meeting up on this day every month to talk about business. It should be, Oh, we're going out or we sitting talking about, I'm asking about advice. I'm asking about life. You know, it should be like, damn, like, oh, what you got going? How your day going? You good? You good over there? So I feel like mentorship has to, we kind of got to shift the way we think about it. And then the mentor that um, that, that told me to move to L.A. was MJ Harris. So um, we were like real cool, like family. And uh, I, I reached out to him on Instagram. I was like, yo, you, you, I, I love what you're doing. You know, uh, we'd love to hop on the phone call with you, blah, 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 blah. So we hopped on the phone call and, you know, he saw everything I was doing. And he hopped on the call because I had branded myself very well. And I, yeah. I, I don't want to invest in you unless you've invested in yourself. So, yeah. you know, at that point, when you look at somebody's page, you can tell that they've invested in themselves. Like, okay, bet. I'm going to take the time out and really see what they're talking about. Uh, yeah. So that was my birthday in 2018. So, MJ, so just, just so that those who don't know, MJ is actually, um, that's Malcolm, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Malcolm, Malcolm's out here. I'm, you know, based from, he, he comes from out here in D.C. where I am. Yeah, so, D.C. Uh, so yeah, man. So so go ahead. I, I just wanted to make sure people knew, you know, who MJ was, and you know, all the all the amazing thing that he does on a daily basis. Hey, popping MJ Harris. Uh, but yeah, and and then uh, he asked me why I hadn't moved to LA at, at, mm -hmm. the, at the beginning of 2019, and I told him like the reasons why. I was like food stamps. I was like cost of living. I was like my connections and stuff like that. And he yeah. was like, he was like, uh. We got all that out here. And whenever you move, you're not going to lose those connections. You're just going to grow your network even more. Uh, because I had been hitting roadblocks in, in Arkansas. Like, it was mm -hmm. just like, bro, I'm, I've outgrown this uh, this area. So 
I mean, and then I had thought about moving to LA and when I first graduated, but I was like, mm, I want to build something. I don't want to just be the person to move out there and be like, yeah, I'm just out in LA and I'm just trying to make it. Like I'm living couch to couch. I can't do that. I got a whole yeah. shoe company at inventory. So I waited and, you know, I just, that, that sometimes you just need people come in your life just to give you that push you need, you know, mm -hmm. push you off that cliff. And I feel like the, the greatest of the greats need that. Like without that, you know, a lot of people would be stuck in this, in situations for, for a long time. You know, yeah. and then that would end up, you know, causing them to not step into their purpose or continue to like uh, elevate, you know, yeah. for, uh, or leave home. Right. Or sometimes yeah. people will not leave home without that extra encouragement or push. Like, man, you you can live outside of what you know, because, you know, most of us, you don't move past 10 miles from where you grew up back home. I'm, you know, what I mean? college far like on the different side of the state so i mean i had left but i had never but i i had parents and shit then you know i didn't i wasn't just like myself just up yeah. and moved the whole company like thousands of miles across the country it was like that was next level so you know i visited la uh two times and then i moved i moved within like five months um because i was like yo i really like it so i feel like you have to see it and like actually put yourself in that space to be like okay it's, it's opportunity. This is different. This is something else. And then when you got somebody that's successful, that's believing you, believing in you, and connecting you with people and plugging you in, you like, bet. I think I feel like I can do it. So you you already have the the confidence within yourself, and you already can do it. You just have to like really. It has to be brought out of you. And however that might be, you know, it might be somebody actually getting a deal or getting a new job or or meeting a mentor or meeting a pot a partner, uh, a life partner, whatever that might be. There's always gonna be something that that brings that out of you because a lot of people are like, damn, you know, I, I, now I got another reason to, to hustle even harder. I got a daughter, you know. Some people might be like that. Uh, like me, I don't have kids, I don't got a wife, I don't got no family. So it's just like I'm really hustling for for me. But then it got bigger than me. It was about my ancestors, the people that came before me. It was about the people that I inspire. It was about my future kids. I started thinking about generational wealth. I'm like, damn, you know, this is a lot bigger than me. So if I if I give up right now or I don't take this leap of faith. Will I will I be that person that says, "Oh, what if?" Or I should have, or I could have. You know, I'm not yeah. gonna be that. So I'm not I'm not that kind of person. So um, I feel like everybody once once something becomes bigger than you, that's when it's 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 greatness. It's meant to be because if you think about every big business, it's it's bigger than them. It's not all about them. We think about Netflix. It's about us sitting at home watching TV. When we think about iPhone, it's about us connecting with our friends and our family. You know, so you're solving the problems of thousands and thousands and thousands and millions of people. So what I had to do then, I'm like, damn, I'm not just solving my problem. I'm solving yeah. a community of people. I'm, I'm solving all of our problems. So when it becomes bigger, you'll do anything. Um, you do anything. I love it, man. You know, one of the things I was thinking about is we kind of, you know, obviously with what's going on right now, um, you know, there's this huge shift. And obviously before, you know, the death of our good brother, you know, we were stuck at home during COVID. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so we were just thinking, okay, what am I gonna do with, with this time? What am I gonna do with this life? You know, and there's this issue that we're dealing with when it comes to minority owned businesses, right? And, and I was just oh, yeah. doing some research, you know, 2017, the buying power for African Americans, $1.1 million, trillion dollars, excuse me. And so we only spend two cents in the community. You listen, know, that's listen. crazy. Over with. <laughs> it's sad, bro. Like I can, I can go on and on and on about that because being a person that owns a, a luxury black-owned business, you know, you see, you see the struggles of owning a black-owned business and then owning a luxury business that has a, a higher price point. We're trying to compete with brands that we idolize, who use our people that we idolize to, you yeah. know, push them forward. Um, so I feel like even in this moment where. You know, we we'll boycott shit, but we won't replace shit. You know, exactly. we'll talk down on some shit, but we won't replace shit. We'll we'll accept an apology letter or we'll accept a tweet that says we stand for you, but we won't replace these niggas. And until we replace them, we're not going to break the cycle. The cycle will continue after this. We're going we're we're bashing brands. We're 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 putting them down. We're boycotting them until they say, okay, we stand with you. And we're bashing the white America. We're 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 bashing the president. We're bashing this and that until they put four people in jail. But after those four people are going to jail, then where do we go? Exactly. We go back, back to their stores. We go shop back with to their sisters and their brothers. You know, we target gets the burnt down, whether it was us or or them. 
and then it's, and then so we had two different sides. We had a side that said, "Hey, this is what you get if you if we don't get justice, we're gonna burn all your shit down." Yeah. And we had another side that said, "Hey." This isn't us. The media always tries to dictate us in a negative way. Here's a guy that's been paid to bash all the shit and start the riots. So are we going to be on the side where we say, hey, this is what we're doing? Or are we going to be on the side and say, hey, we're not doing this. We're peacefully protesting. So, and, then, and at the end of the day, it's like we can't, you can't tear down a system that is very well structured that we're attached to, like been yeah. attached to for years, and then just completely tear it apart, separate, and not have a system of structure on our own end. Like we, so how do you have the conversation about redirecting those funds? Because at the end of the day, it's it's what we're taught, right? We're taught to go to Target. We're taught to go buy Louis Vuitton and Gucci. And obviously, the reason why we do that, in my mind, in my thought process has been, it's what we see on TV, right? It's what we what we see, you know, everyone that influences us, in air quotes, that's why we're wearing those brands. But it's so important that we find brands like yours where you can actually reinvest in support because you talk about you know i'm not asking for money per se it's support and, and how do how would people support black businesses in a way that would would make sense for the culture shit i mean even even from celebrities if we go to the top top yeah we had we had we bought black trying to open up a soul food market so we'll go burn down target I'm not saying like that we actually did it but i just yeah. just an example we'll go burn down target but we won't give so give them five. They can't raise five hundred thousand to get a soul food market started. Even one celebrity could cut a check for five hundred racks and not blink. Yep. They could cut a check for that. So until we can get something like that started, we can't really talk about oh, the white man this, the white man that. It's like yo, look at this. We have luxury brands. We have everyday needs brands. We have We Buy Black. They got damn near everything. It's the Black Amazon. They tried to start a grocery store. They couldn't get fucking started. And that was in Atlanta. And it's like, yo, that's the black capital. It's like, yeah, if you, if you can't get it started in Atlanta, where can you get it started? And it's like, the so support starts with actually putting your money where your tweet is because niggas always hashtag and get in challenges. And that's the, that's the only time we, we only come together as a community around hashtags, around challenges, and around national funerals. We don't come together around, oh, Here's a black owned business that can replace Gucci. Here's a black owned business that can replace Neiman's. Here's a black owned business that can replace Walmart. Let's give them that support. Because I posted a video today said it said most black owned businesses don't need funding. They just need support. Support. Yeah. Bro, and it was some real shit. And you posted your bit. You said, I'm starting this business. And, and it was like legit shit. Like if you go look at Luxury Moors, I'm not just posting some bullshit on it. It's like actual businesses that can replace the businesses we idolize. If we have a group for those. And, and we had a million people. We got a million people in that blackout day, whatever group the dude started. If we had a million people in a group and we picked an entrepreneur every month and we said we have to buy their product every month, that business, our businesses, our community, it would be fucking ridiculous. If I had 100 people every month purchasing a pair of shoes from me, or every other month, or one month out of the year, whatever it might be, that is something that because most businesses fail because they that not because they're not they're just bad businesses because they don't have the support to keep fucking going because it costs a lot to run a business. Yeah, businesses don't get the support that they need to actually thrive, and then we also bash them. We put them in the same box. Oh, all black-owned businesses got bad customer service. Nick. Have you shopped with LFLS shoes? Because I am responding in seconds. <laughs> it's like, no doubt. But you can't put everybody in the same box. We can't bash each other on a hot mic. Because if you look at them, white people, white businesses, Asian businesses, whatever, they are not going to run to a hot mic and bash somebody. Everybody's saying, oh, we need Barack. We miss Barack. But when he was in office, y'all didn't give a fuck about him. Yeah. That he didn't do shit for the culture. But now that he's out and we got Trump, y'all like, damn, we need Barack back. And Barack is long gone. He is not coming back. And I don't know not what coming back. <laughs> because they just, these, they have to understand that they're a purchase too. Yeah. And you have to understand that the president isn't the person making the decisions. Yeah. There is two or three families making, they, they, that there are two families, two or three families that operate all the funds that you're going to get. The she government who, who even move without families? them. The government can't move without the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds. They cannot move without them because they run the Federal Reserve, and that's where all the fucking money is printed. And if they start printing money, the government ain't going to have shit. <laughs> like, it's over. Word. 
<laughs> so that structure, bro, like from the top, like it's it's like we sit at home and we play Monopoly. Yeah. And they sit at the crib and they play Monopoly with the millions of people that live in the country and around yeah. the world. It is it is we are literally like cattle. And if we don't create our own system, we can't separate from that system because if we separate and we come to ourselves, it's going to be chaos. We only have hoods. We don't have neighborhoods. And from neighborhoods, we need to make community. And we don't have neighborhoods. So we can't make community without having neighborhoods and looking within our community and saying, hey, this is what we got to fix, y'all. We can't push away from saying, hey, good example. People always say, you know, black on black crime is a myth, it's fake. And I mean, that's, that's cool. But let it be fake. But at the end of the day, if we don't, even if we don't say black on black crime, we have to say, my brother is killing my brother. My brother is molesting my sister. My brother is is is, is disobeying my sister. What are we going to do about this? And then people will say, oh, we're white on white crime. White people kill white people more than this. Asians kill people more than this because you're whoever you're closest to. That's who you're going to kill. I get yep. it. Yep. But in my household, if you come to my house and you say, hey, they down the street. They blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't really give a fuck. This is what going, what's going on in my house. So until we stop giving each other what we want to hear to feel like we're doing some shit and we start giving each other the truth about what's really going on, whatever title you want to give it, black on black crime or my brother killing my brother or whatever, separation, I don't care what you want to call it, but until we start talking about real issues in the community and, and facing them head on and putting a solution with it, Going and get, going out here, getting in the streets and telling and giving them hope and building a neighborhood is is temporary, right? So it's all, it's all, it's it's temporary, but it's really important that we have strategy. You have and, to strategy is everything, bro. And and then based on even based on what's going on right now, it shows you that we that the leaders we have aren't really leaders. It's just like whoever has a voice and whoever has the most followers. And then we also strategy is something that takes time. Yeah. If you see, we reacted off of anger. We didn't sit back and think, okay, bet. Okay, what should we do? How should we move? We instantly just jumped out. I'm moving like this. I'm moving like this. I'm moving like this. And of course, everybody has their own lane, but you have to excel in that lane. You have to, ha you have to be an expert within that lane. So when we sit back and we think and we strategize, we get different results. So it's, it's major. Even, even when the, the Blackout Tuesday if you notice, I had to get off Instagram, bro. They everybody posted it. Everybody posted. Everybody posted black, 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 black. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. Then people said, "Hey, stop posting hashtag Black Lives Matter." Would it go back and put Blackout Tuesday? At that point, I'm like, thousands of people, millions, millions of people <laughs> have put hashtag Black Lives Matter, and now you got to backtrack. Yep. That's a lot of backtrack, and that's a lot of people that you got to try to reach in a short amount of time. And it's not going to do it. They halfway over, three fourths <laughs> of the way done, and now we finally back to say, okay, Blackout Tuesday. It's like, bro, if we don't, it wasn't even meant for the the mass population. It was meant for the music artists, whoever, to share whatever they're going to share. We have to sit and think and really take action where we're actually seeing results. It's like, what are you really doing? Do some shit. Don't just do some random shit. Do some shit that's going to, like, change some shit. Yeah. Like, really think about which, what moves you're making, you know? I agree 100%, man. You know, um, you think about strategy and also the challenges of when you get back to minority-owned businesses. One of the things I think about a lot is not only that we need support for those business owners, but we also need um, – you know, we lose opportunities based on obscurity. So people don't know you. Yeah. you know I, mean? I don't think there's enough of us in aware of great black businesses. It's almost like we need our own, it's like we need agents, it's like a real agency that supports, like a, a marketing agency that supports minority owned businesses so that we can get that information to the public. So the public knows, okay, these are brands that are amazing, not just because they're putting in dollars towards marketing, but it, you know, as far as like being a part of the agency, but also that they're, they've been vetted. We're trying to see them grow. And it's just, we need to have that space. And, and I love that, you know, you're focusing on, you know, luxury more. So talk about that, like, like explain why you decided to go that route and, and what's that going to do, you know, for the culture and how we can help. Luxury more is bro is like representation is everything. Yep. We support the, we we go spend thousands 
at these luxury brands that we idolize, but we don't support our own. We don't start our own. So if we can shop with luxury, why can't we establish luxury so we can support that within our own community? The luxury mores, bro, it's really like I have a luxury shoe company, so I know what luxury is. I live, I love luxury lifestyle. I love dapper. I love elegant. I love quality. I love greatness. So it's like I think luxury mores is going to reconnect us with us understanding, you know, how great we are. That we're going to understand our true value because we're going to go to luxury mores and see black men, black women, black kids connected with mansions, connected with nice food plated correctly. We're going to see it connected with uh, black brands that are like luxury brands or high end brands. So I think luxury mores is something that it's, I see a lot of platforms that are directories and that are like, you know, just so many black owned businesses. It's like, oh, come here and find all black owned businesses. But if you do that, people get distracted, people get overwhelmed. They're like, fuck, this is too much. And I'm looking at something that's not a good brand. I'm looking at this t shirt, you know, this iPhone picture from this business. And it's like quality. People get overwhelmed when stuff is not consistent, clean, quality. That's why other brands get our support so much more because it's easy. It's clean. It's consistent. It's straight to the point. It's, it's laid. It's organized. But when you come to ours, it's just like we want to we want to compile every black owned business into this into this marketplace. And it's not going to work like that. You know, you'll see a better result from picking and choosing the best of the best and highlighting the ones that can replace the best of the best on the other side. And it's like, okay, bet. If I want a candle, I'm going to go to Luxury Moors. I see a picture of a candle. Bet. Let me click through and see this brand. So I want it to be like, if you walked into Neiman's, you can go to a, a section and you see like three, four brands. <clears throat> like you see, you see like six, seven shoe brands. You see uh, different clothing brands have their own section. So when you go to Luxury Moors, it's clean, straight to the point. You got home goods, you got grooming and beauty, you got apparel, you got lifestyle, and you click there and you see a picture of a brand with the name of it over it. And that's it. Like clean, simple, straight to the point. And you find anything you need that is luxury. And I think connecting luxury with black and making that a big thing, making that the new norm and replacing these pa these places that we would go for the platform. You have I think it's a great party. platform. You know, a great idea for a platform. You know, I I go ahead, sorry. Oh, somebody said it sounds like you have a good, a good, have an idea for the platform. I already have it. It's already out. But you can click, you can go check out Luxury Moors right now. I launched it on Monday. Um, a lot of traffic, a lot of growth. Um, I'm, I'm a branding fucking expert. Like I'm. I, I'm so, so Eric, let's let's talk about this. So, if I have my own brand, mm -hmm. you know, I have you know style jumper suits. Let's just say. And you're going to be the person you're curating these different brands, how are those brands connecting with, you know, luxury mores, how is that process to, to be on the page to be vetted? I mean, I think, you know, that's, that's amazing as far as the platform, but how would one be a part of this process? Yeah. I mean, on the website, they can, um, they can submit their brand. And I'll look at it. And if it doesn't meet my, my qualifications, I'm not going to do it. Like either your, your, your website, like, so I, I what I'm going to do when I start accepting other brands, because I've had like 10 or 12 brands reach out uh, through the, through the, um, the submission form. Okay. And I'm going to do them and check their stuff out. And if it's not the right quality, like the Instagram feed isn't good, the quality of the post, uh, the way the bio is, the profile picture, the logo quality, the website quality, the product quality, uh, package presented, promoted, however that is, I'm going to look at all that based on my branding expertise because yes. I know people want to see how they want to see it and when they want to see it. So because I know that, I can look at your brand and be like, okay, bet. If we change this, we shift this, we add this, we take away this, then I'll add you to the website. Because now I want you to come out in front of these thousands of people, quality. Because my, my brand is attached to it. And yes. then also the black community's brand is attached to it. So it's like, I don't want to bring put out something that's like BS. Because we already got enough BS getting highlighted. So why don't I just really take my time, say, hey... I love your product, but whenever if you got the funds for it, let's set up a one-on-one -on -one coaching session. Or here are my digital guides. You should read these and then implement the strategies that I've given within my guides and then come back. I'll be watching you because now you, you're on my radar. I'm going to watch you. I'm going to see what you're doing. Reach out to me if you need help, and let's set up a coaching session. But from there, because a lot of people would just do whatever just to get their money. Like, all right, babe, 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 I'm, I'm going to put your shit on, on the website. Just, just pay me, blah, 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 blah. I'll put yeah. you on. But it's me. I'm like, yo. No, no, no. We, we, it's not, it's not about the money. Even though I gotta get paid because this is my life. It's how I eat from coaching, guides, speaking, the websites, the shoes, whatever. I have to get paid. But at the end of the day, I want you to make your bread too. 
And if you're not presented in the right way, you're not going to make no bread. Period. So that's this thing, man. You know, it's this this absence of apprenticeship. So that's where I was going. And I was hoping you, you, you hit the nail on the head. And what I was hoping you're going is, is basically like a, an apprenticeship too. Cause you know, obviously if I'm trying to get to a certain level mm -hmm. and I get shot down, then, okay, now what do I do? Exactly. And, you know, instead of saying, Hey, Hey, you know, Hey son, you know, I love what you're doing. You, you're in the right direction, but here's a guideline, a blueprint, a pathway for you to be a part of this, you know, this network of amazing luxury brands that are, you know, of black ownership or minority own ownership, which is super, super important. So I like that you had that as a process and you're thinking that way because it's super important. So you talked about, you know, can you break down the three P's and the three F's? Yeah. So the three P's is a passion purpose product. So I believe anytime I'm coaching somebody, I'm like, okay, that's for business. So passion purpose product is for the business side of, thing, of life. So whatever you're passionate about, you have to know your passion because everything I do is fueled off passion. Purpose, what's your why? Why do you do this? What's your movement? What are you standing on? So if you don't if you don't have a purpose behind what you're doing, you know, it's like, okay, what the fuck are you doing it for? You know, there has to be and then product, you create a product around, you know, your passion and your purpose. Because, you know, without a story, without passion, without purpose, you know, what what is a product? What is a business? You know, if the the most successful businesses or the most successful business owners they have a great story and they can touch people's heart through that. They have a great purpose that they stand on. Oh, we support this. We support that. You know, so say, for example, you know, now some businesses purpose, purpose might be uh, centered around Black Lives Matter. And then they get more support from black people because that's that's connected to their purpose. So I think purpose is very big because people understand your business more and they get more connected with the business versus the product. Because the product is just whatever. Any nigga can have a hat or, or a T-shirt or a bottle. But what's the benefit? What's the game? What's the value? What's the story? Why am I? What am? How am I connecting with this? And I feel like if ever, if anybody doesn't know what makes them unique or their product unique, think about your story because your story is just like this, just like a fingerprint. fingerprint. Nobody ever, nobody else has this fingerprint. Nobody ever will. Nobody ever has. So think about your story and what makes you unique as an individual because nobody's walked that path that you've walked. Nobody's been in the house you've been in. Nobody's you know been through what you've been through like specifically. So. You know, passion, purpose, product. And the F's is uh, is faith, finesse, and friendship. So faith, you know, you got to have faith. If you don't have faith in yourself, why the hell are you doing what you're doing? Because I'm yep. not faith in you. If you don't have faith in yourself. Uh, yep. Finesse, you have to finesse your way through life, man. Like, finesse is, like, you'll end up in situations that you wasn't even, like, supposed to be in because you carry yourself a certain way or you, you got the gift of gab or, you know, whatever it might be. I, I look at success kind of like the club, you know. You walk up to the club. You got a line of 100 people. They charge $20 at the door. you like, fuck that line. You got a suit on. You walk up to the door. You know the bouncer. He's like, oh, what's good, bro? You, you back? Like, what's, come on in. You good? You good? Go ahead in. Yeah. Not about what you know. It's about who you know. Finesse. Yeah. Finesse your way through life and into situations you need to be in. And friendship connects directly with finesse because, like I said, it's not about what you know. It's about who you know and who knows you. So friendship is the reason why I'm here today. That's why I made a networking guide. I created a networking guide because the way I network, it's a finesse to it. It's crazy. Networking is everything. It's not about what you know, it's about who you know and who knows you. So finesse. Exactly. I mean, I, I'm, I'm so happy that you're, you're explaining this to people because, you know, as a young entrepreneur and businessman who's been doing this for some years now, you're able to connect these dots, right? Mm -hmm. And you're in one of the most um, populated and most, um, you know, people focused areas in the whole world where, you know, I used to tell my friends, everybody who, who are the most beautiful people in their hometown, their small hometown, trying to get to LA to model, you know <laughs> what I mean? Or trying to get to New York. And it could be the baddest back in Arkansas or Florence, South Carolina, you know, or, or Jackson, Mississippi. And then you get there and you like, not even a 200. Listen, <laughs> the baddest girl that you had in school at your high school ain't shit when you move to L.A. or when you move to any coast. Or, you know, the baddest girl in my, that we thought was the best, bro, that we were like, damn, she bad. I, I want her. Ain't shit. So when I look back at the girls, we used to like, and then over time, too, you like, dang, she ain't want me then. Like, look at her. Like, damn, she look rough. Like, shit, I look pretty straight. Like, I'm doing pretty good. So... It happens, and it happens <laughs> to the 
So it, hey, it happens every day, every year, every graduation class. You go to college, you're like, man, they batted them back home. You leave. Yeah. And it's the same for us too, right? <laughs> it's the same for guys. You know, we you know, we think we that we that guy, we that top dog at home at home, you know, in town, <laughs> your your body might be in shape until you see some of them boys out there. You're like, okay. I got work to do, or it ain't happening regardless. You know what I mean? Because you just can't, you can't change those things. You know what I mean? I think I was shit, man. I just, thought I was just like a normal dude. And then, I, then over time, I just blew. I just became like, I'm like, all right, bet. I guess I'm cool. <laughs> I guess I'm cool. All right, whatever. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so let's talk about luxury brands. So, um, the company, um, LFLS, you know, in the shoe brand. So talk about like how the concept came up, you know, it looks like, you know, you've done, you, you started with um, manufacturing in Brazil mm -hmm. and got into Spain. So talk about that because if we're, if we're speaking the value of luxury brands, what makes, you know, your shoe company a luxury brand and how are you separating yourself from others? <laughs> Separation is because of the story um, behind it. Separation is because I'm black. And I'm, and I'm the man in the shoe industry because the shoe industry is really, really, really hard to get into. It's not yeah. hard to do. So uh, separating myself because of the gold tip, my unique eye when it comes to like designing and adding little features that people wouldn't typically add on a shoe in the place that I add it. Um, so that's what separates. What makes it luxury is the quality. So like, you know, like people got to understand that the dress shoes are a lot higher quality than sneakers because sneakers are usually like just glued. The sole is usually glued. But with dress shoes, it's either Blake, it can be glued too, but it's either uh, quality is Blake, Blake stitched or Goodyear welted. Uh, so all my shoes are, are Blake stitched. So that means they can be resold, uh, you know, over time. Another thing that makes them quality, uh, after, or a luxury, after after you have the quality you need, then okay, it's like, okay, where do I set my price point? <clears throat> mm -hmm. And I feel like luxury kind of plays in with like the price point because of course, luxury is considered like the best of the best. Like this is just a good product. But you can say, like, Gucci, they just bullshit. They, they charge you $1,000 for some shit that should be cost 150 It's terrible. So, so I, think, I think luxury comes along when you build that brand credibility and that brand name as well. Because if you if you can't just type, slap $1,000 on some shit and, and expect people to just buy it, you know, it's got to be, okay, This what's, what's the benefit? You know, how yeah. have, have you built the brand name? You know, what's the lifestyle? I feel like lifestyle is a big thing, too, because I, I promote a certain lifestyle with LFLS shoes. So it's a luxury lifestyle. So if you know what that lifestyle is, whether it's luxury, streetwear, whether it's just like dapper or whether it's like athleisure, you know that lifestyle of that, of that specific, um, you know, industry. So I feel like you have to, you know, have the same image or have the same feel. Like when people put your shit on, that you feel like they step into, they about to go step into a Lamborghini or a Maserati or something it's like that. The lifestyle that you create and the image and the feeling and desire to be a part of something that's greater than yourselves. And, you know, yeah. one of the things that really shifted my thought process is when I was in LA and in school and design school and you know and even knowing TJ it's like hey these guys you know you look at 10 brands and they're made from the same countries mm -hmm. and some of them in the same factories as a very low cost item and we're paying you know you know 10x on what it should cost which is ridiculous so I had a hard time you know, spending that kind of money. Well, I've never had a, a Louis Vuitton or Gucci. That, that to me was so surface to, you know, what it's like to actually create a product, put your hands on it, you come <clears throat> with design, and then you add your value there instead of a mass marketed product. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing is that it's our culture that's increasing the value of these products. Oh, because yeah. We're the ones out there buying it. So if we would redirect those funds and that mindset and start thinking back to your point of, you know, luxury more is that we just shift that capital, shift those down at $1.1 trillion. Imagine if we get a third of that back into the community. If we go from two cents in the community over, over a 30 day span, let me see what the fact is like for 30 days, you know, it says in, in our community, our dollar spends six hours in the community compared yeah. to the communities in 30 days, you know, Asian community in 30 days, their dollars start circulating in, in the community, which is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, on Black Wall Street, you should have stayed in there for like five years. Which is crazy and amazing. But, you know, we talk about that and, I, and, I, and I've had this conversation before. 
and it, it sometimes it can be controversial is the idea of desegregation because I, I believe a part of desegregation was that we lost a lot of that constant spinning in the community you know because that's where everybody was you weren't going out and buying all these other brands because it was you know mr charles hat shop you know yeah. on Dargan street or or mr mike's you know soup suits you the cobblers at in the neighborhood in the culture or and so as things change and, and the gates open up if you will we it diluted a lot of our our products the people who support it and we just kind of let things go into this whole process of consumerism so you know i think what we have to do because obviously we're not going to go back to segregation that we use platforms <laughs> but we but we become very hyper focused in platforms like you know luxury mores yeah. and start really like we need that for for us to sustain ourselves but also to move politically as well because then we can just remove those dollars from other businesses back into our community we can support and build those foundations so that we when we talk about generational wealth and we talk about you know adding you know to the culture and the diaspora is so important and we have such a unique position in this world you know especially from the diaspora people are looking at us all the time so if we figure that out as a culture and a community it would shift the whole world yeah when, you know what i mean because they're like oh my gosh you know these guys have figured it out you know what i mean and and i love that you know you're you're thinking in this context at such a young age because you know i'm just thinking man give you 10 more years give you five more years what it's going to look like and we need more young brothers like you in conjunction with brothers who are old school like me so that we can you know nurture one another build us up pull in the you know the technology information that you know and that free thinking that you have and then you take you know some of the wisdom of the old school guys that you know you know who have experienced you know i'm i'm 45 i'll be 46 in july so you said your birthday is in july what's your birthday 28th oh shit. okay i'm 11. okay that's all right man summer <laughs> babies summer babies man but i'm the first generation out of segregation me mm. you know what i mean and that's we have so much further to go and we don't talk about those things right so your generation wasn't necessarily influenced so much by um, those generations before, in theory, just like, um, you know, I'm Gen X, you got the baby boomers, there's so much of the baby boomers process of thinking that my generation has. And now guys like you, my daughter's 22. So she don't even connect, you know, you guys don't even connect to that because you're like, man, I'm gonna, I'm a free, freer thinker, if you will. That's what I'm saying. I love the fact that your thinking and your thought process is freer and it's not so uh, muddled in the ways of the past. I think, I, I think I think we have to, going back to the point where we talk about Black Wall Street, I think we have to remember where we, the age we're in, we don't have to have a physical Black Wall Street. We can yeah. have a virtual Black Wall Street. And yeah. that Black Wall Street could be Luxury Moors being Neiman's, it could be We Buy Black being Walmart, it could be or Soul Food Market being the grocery store that we would go to. Like, we have to start to think like the Amazons and realize that, you know, we don't have to be going out to a brick and mortar to actually b build a, a Black Wall Street. We can have like a, a literal virtual like Black Wall Street. Um, and then going to the point you made about uh, the younger generation, you know, that's why I do the sponsor of Young Entrepreneur. So if anybody's on here and wants to sponsor a Young Entrepreneur, please, by all means, give up a coffee for a day <laughs> in a month and give $9. You can, you can sponsor one for $9, two for 14 and three for $19 a month. So you know, that's something that, you know, at a, at a young age, like 20, 24 I am, you know, being able to reach back to people that's 14, 15, you know, and shit like that and see the way they talk and think and be able to give them a guide for the free because somebody's sponsoring that every month is something that's really powerful because they get access to knowledge that they need to actually, you know, shift their mindset or open their mind more or apply that to what they're already doing, what they're already passionate about. Because catching them at that age, bro, they don't have to unlearn anything. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> unlearn a lot of shit <laughs> we have to and i mean i'm young still but there's a lot of shit that you have to unlearn because of the way society has raised you or, or molded your mind and like school for example you know more people are homeschooling because the fucking system is designed for you to be on a structured schedule so you can work your way up to working for somebody else and build somebody else's empire without building yours 
So it's like, yeah. like, you know, taking advantage of the time when we got kids right now at the crib, you know? Uh, I'm a millennial, but, and I don't have kids, but I'm telling parents like, yo, you got your kids at the crib, be happy. Don't be upset that you got them at the crib. You know, you get to teach them something else outside of what they're teaching them in school because they don't teach the shit they need to know in school. If I knew the shit that I knew now in school, nigga, like, what? I didn't know. Yeah, and, and the information what? is so outdated anyway, right? So even when we were in school, you know, school books were two or three years old. The information was two or three years old. And so that Gen Z is so basically hour by hour, minute by minute, updated information. And that's why these kids are so spectacular in their thinking and, and you know, in the way that they see things, which is amazing. Um, so I know time is going to be starting to wind down. So I want to do two things that I always do. First, you know, I want to make sure that everyone on, who's listening, that they have an opportunity to take a look at, you know, you have some guides um, on your site that people can can learn and improve themselves as, as entrepreneurs. So um, where can they go exactly to get those guides, first of yeah. all? So if y'all click up here, you should be able to tap on my name, my profile. Go over there, uh, click the link in my bio. It'll say uh, Digital Guides to Success. You click on that, and you'll see the four guides that I have out. One about personal brand development, one about branding and business growth strategies, one about network building tactics, and one about social marketing 101. Um, so that's where you can get those. Uh, what do you say? Love it. Have been Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I do conversations just like this. Me and Levi, we talk. It's, it's called business branding and bullshit. So we, we go in on that shit. I don't know if have you ever one of those. I heard it. I heard you guys. I, <laughs> yeah. I love it, man. You know. It just makes me want to listen more, to put more things into action, and connect with even more and more brothers and sisters just like this. So I really appreciate that, man. You guys are being raw, and I love it. I just I crack up all the time. That's you know? just funny, boy. <laughs> it is. You guys crack me up. That's what I'm saying, man. You're you're candor, man, and it's it's honest, you know, and it's real. So I love that. Um, so two segments. So I call this the creative last supper, right? So basically. Uh -huh. It's going to be a last supper, and you're going to say, you know, these are the people you like to invite, and you want to kick it with at this last supper, all right? Um, so we're going to start, and I'm, I'm use some of this just because of my age group, but also some of the things I think you might, you, you know, you might connect with based on where you grew up. So UGK or 8-Ball and MJG? I mean, I, I don't know. I'd probably say UGK. I don't know. UGK. Okay, no worries. Kendrick or J. Cole? Probably J. Probably Probably J. Cole. All right. LeBron as a filmmaker or Kobe as a filmmaker? I'm a LeBron fan, period. So, I mean, I'm going to have to go. He, he's about to do a Black Wall Street um, thing. So, yeah, LeBron for sure. Yeah. That's what's up. Um, Big Ear Pop? Probably Pop. He spoke. Right. He was on that shit. Yeah, he was. He was speaking truth. Uh, Jay-Z or Puffy? Uh, uh, Jay Z own his own liquor. Puffy don't. So fuck Puffy. Gotcha. <laughs> Jay Z. <laughs> Pierre Moss or, or Virgil Abloh? Neither. <laughs> Back. <laughs> All right. Tyler the Creator or, or Dan, uh, Donald Glover? He said who? Tyler the Creator or Donald Glover? You know, Childish Gambino. Childish Gambino. Chappelle or Kevin Hart? Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart, cool as fuck. <laughs> Beyonce or Rihanna? Rihanna, bad. Oh, shit. Rihanna, if you watch, if you I'm watch. I'm putting it out there, bro. I'm putting it out there. All right. Meek, Meek or Drake? Drake, for sure. Lights me. Keep All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro, man. So we, we got 50 seconds. Uh, if you can answer this, no, number one, I, again, I want to appreciate, I appreciate you so much. And we need to do this again and just continue developing and, and building this relationship. It's powerful. Um, if you could spend, this is the final question. If you could spend 24 hours with the creative, who would that be and why? A creative. Any creative, dead or alive? I don't even know, bro. I don't even know. All right. So yeah. who, who who inspires you other than family? Like someone you think about, like, yeah, I can rock with that person. Uh, Will Smith. I, I would probably spend time with Will Smith. 24 okay. hours. That's what's up, man. That's well, I, I appreciate you. You've been a, you know, gentleman and a scholar. Have me smiling the whole time. And, for sure. Yeah, man, you be blessed, and we'll see you on the next one. For sure. Much love. Thanks for having me. If you want to see what I'm wearing on a day to day basis, check out my Instagram. There you'll find a ton of looks that maybe you can choose from, or at least get some inspiration. Hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you have any questions or suggestions, leave it in the comments below. 
We'll see you next time.